You only need to know me. I will be the one. So the last video I made got a lot of positive feedback. Thank you to everyone that subscribed and thank you to those that commented. Many of your ideas have helped to inspire this follow-up video, especially those that suggested to me alternative ways in which the stories of Satan and Lucifer and the devil generally have been interpreted. Feel free to check out the companion to this video series, the most sinister One Piece theory you'll ever watch after this. But for today's video, we are going to be relying on a few comments from the comment section, and sorry I would post all your names on the screen, but many of you said the same thing, which can be summarized as, Luffy is the devil Lucifer, otherwise known as Lucy, and he was born to change the world, his father's vision, to overthrow God. And Oda is maybe asking a fundamental philosophical and spiritual question, is rebellion against God necessarily a bad thing? For the devil was known for his arrogance and rebellious nature, and so is Luffy. Let's begin with God Valley, which aside from the destinations of Mary Joanne Elbaf, if there was a devil fruit tree, it might have grown there as well. Rox was known as the taboo pirate chasing after forbidden knowledge to become king of the world. Rox as a will of D carrier might have been considered a devil, just as his rival Goldie Roger was considered a devil, and that his devil's blood ran in the veins of his son Ace. Also, since Rox wanted to become king of the world and attacked God Valley, he not only attacked gods or God's people, but God himself, for the great Imu Sama is the king of the world. And here is Rox Dizabek attempting to become king of the world, and so maybe attempting to become God or overthrow God. I also wonder if the real devil in the past had or has a dream. It should have manifested as a devil fruit since the devil fruits are born from wishes, desires, and so dreams. Which means if the devil wants to overthrow God and take his throne to become king of the world, what sort of power would he need? If Imu is a devil fruit user, would the Yami Yami Nomi have been born from the devil's desire to defeat all devil fruit users including Imu? Also recognize that God is typically associated with light and the darkness of the Yami Yami Nomi would be its perfect opposition. Also Rox might have known some things similar to the scholars of Ohara who Vegapunk tells us were considered devils as well an Ohara where there is an actual tree of knowledge, like in the Bible, in one piece on the island of Ohara. And then maybe on God Valley there was also a devil fruit tree growing from which a series of powerful devil fruits in the current storyline were born, possibly the Yami Yami no Mi, but also the other rocks pirates with the exception of Big Mom. Some wonder if Whitebeard, Shiki, and even the Marines and Goku found their devil fruit abilities there, just as Kaido got his mythological dragon devil fruit from the events of God Valley. Or maybe there was a certain tree there that gave birth to mythological or god-devil fruits. Maybe it was not the Battle of Rocks, Dizabek, and others that ultimately led to the destruction of God Valley. That doesn't seem like a good enough reason. Maybe Rocks, Dizabek discovered something and, like Clover and the other scholars of Ohara, the entire island, including Rocks, had to be destroyed. What if an ancient weapon or devil fruit tree existed there? What if something forbidden was discovered and the government took no chances? deciding to wipe the island's existence out entirely just like you see in zombie movies when they drop nuclear bombs on entire cities to eradicate a world-ending threat. And so in this case, a threat to the world government's existence. Anyways, let's move on from trees to the actual devil of the story as presented by this wild theory for the video. Monkey D. Luffy might be driven by the inherited will of the devil to overthrow God in this twisted turn of events. A passage titled, When Did Angels Become Demons? says, According to familiar Christian mythology, demons are or were fallen angels. The day star Satan or Lucifer, the morning star and light bringer of dawn, was a high-ranking angel who rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. Other angels that had rebelled alongside him were cast down and became the devil's minions. These fallen angels became demons. Demon refers to being an evil or unclean or polluted spirit, as well as all malevolent superhuman or supernatural beings. We learn that Delphi users have supernatural powers hated by Mother Nature, and we know that Imu is currently cleansing the world of pirates and revolutionaries, some of whom are Devil Fruit users. The great cleansing scene is also supported by a series of pictures of persons of interest to Imu, for the cleansing maybe. Lights are light bringers that should be snuffed out, erased from history. And so the comment that I got from a subscriber that Luffy's alias or nickname as Lucy in Dres Rosa was deliberate. 
that Oda was teasing the final battle of God versus the devil in One Piece really blew my mind. Maybe it's been discussed before, I'm not sure. But Luffy and so Lucy or Lucifer challenging God. In Drizrosa we get Lucy or Lucifer, otherwise known as the Morning Star and Lightbringer of Dawn, and the Sun God Luffy who traveled on the Sunny, so Sunlight, to free Drizrosa from the tyranny of the former Celestial Dragon and God Doflamingo. To summarize, Luffy as Lucy brought the Sun or the Dawn to Drizrosa, just as Lucifer is called the Lightbringer or Morning Star, a morning star being the Dawn. The sunrise you see in the morning. Lucifer was also known as the Son of Dawn in some parts. And just as we've compared Luffy to Jesus in the past with Luffy's death and awakening in Wano, the return of Joy Boy to become the Sun God, the Son of God and so the inheritor of God's or Joy Boy's will, did you know that Jesus and Satan have similarities? Jesus, like Satan, was called the Morning Star and referred to himself as the Morning Star at times and maybe Oda is playing with both of these individuals, Jesus and the Devil, for Luffy's character. The Morning Star is also not the only concept that is applied to both Jesus and Satan though. Jesus is referred to as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Satan is compared to a lion seeking someone to devour. The point I'm trying to make is this. Both Jesus and Satan, to a certain extent, have similarities to lions. Jesus is similar to a lion in that he is the king, just like the king of the jungle. Jesus is royal and majestic. And Luffy's ship, the Thousand Sunny, has a lion on it as a figurehead. Satan is similar to a lion in that he seeks to devour other creatures. Think Blackbeard saying he will swallow everything and destroy Marine Ford, as well as sucking in and devouring devil food abilities. The role the devil plays in Oda's story cannot be stressed enough, especially given the fact that so many characters in the story have ties to the devil. If Joy Boy was the original symbolic devil, I guess, then he might have rebelled against Imu or the original god of the One Piece world. There are, after all, various moments in the story where God's authority or the authority of God is challenged, which is a frequent theme in the Bible, I guess, most frequent of which was during Skypiea, for example, Luffy doing so, denouncing Enel. And then there is Zoro saying that he doesn't pray to or believe in God, apparently. During Sabaody, even, we saw Zoro attempt to cut down a celestial dragon, and also Luffy punched a celestial dragon in the face, each an affront to God. Sanji looking like a devil at times when he gets mad, such as during Thriller Bark and igniting into flames. Sanji telling Jabra about his Diablo Jambe, his devil leg attack burning with the spices of the devil, the devil seasoning. Zoro being demonic or being compared to devilish or demonic forces. Zoro's final opponent is believed to be Dracul Nihok, a man who coincidentally wears a cross or crucifix on his neck or around his neck. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God in certain religions, especially Christianity. Zoro also fought against Kuma, agent of the government and so an agent or warlord, however unwillingly, under Emu. Kuma, a man that carried the Bible or word of God around. Kuma also told Zoro, that he would experience a level of pain that was akin to being sent to hell. That Zoro would experience hell which now ties into Zoro stating that he would become the king of hell. Oda has also teased the devil or Satan in his story during Namakura Island, where there is a satanic cult that worships the devil. The cultists on the island were trying to summon the devil but instead ended up summoning Brook in chapter 524, I think it was. And Nico Robin is literally known as the devil's child or devil child and Recently, Robin said she would become a literal devil or demon to support Luffy and her friends. Likewise, Luffy's brother Porcus the Ace was said to have the blood of the devil flowing through his veins and was treated like a devil as a result of that. And so Roger was thought of as a devil therein. And Luffy's brother Sabo is called the Flame Emperor, which just cements the themes of hell even more. Hellfire, the flames of the underworld. Sabo who ate Ace's Mare Mare Nomi to become a Fire Logia inheriting Ace's will as he became fire itself. And just as Luffy in the furtherance of Ace learned to use Red Hawk after the time skip of fire ability. Moreover, Sabo became fire after adopting Luffy's alias, Lucy. And so Sabo was also Lucy or Lucifer, the devil. And mind you, if we consider the ways in which the stories of Satan and Lucifer and the devil have overlapped or blurred over time, the devil or Satan is known for having said the following. When God questioned his disobedience, the devil said, I am better than Adam, for you have created me out of fire, and Adam out of clay. And so the devil or Satan is said to have been created from fire. Likewise, Sabo is Lucy, 
the fire Logia, alluding to the devil created out of fire, the flame emperor, or the revolutionary army that declared war on the world government during the reverie just like Luffy did during Annie's lobby, and just like the devil declared war on God. Both Luffy and his brother Sabo, associated with fire, and the devil maybe, exemplifying the actions of the devil born of fire to challenge the world. So again, Luffy and his devils or demon followers fighting against God or God in some capacity, with Luffy's final battle maybe being one against the God of One Piece himself. In terms of religious imagery or symbolism, I would add that while Sabo and the revolutionaries attacked a monument of the celestial dragons called the Divine Dragon Claw to declare war, which also ties into the most sinister One Piece theory video about Imu and the Red Dragon, Luffy attacked another symbol of the world government, the government's flag, or Jolly Roger, which is representative of the four seas of One Piece and the Holy Land of Mary Joa in the middle. But notice that the symbol of the world government is similar to a cross. The world government symbol is a cross, shaped symbol just like a cross or crucifix. And so Luffy essentially ordered Usopp to burn a cross. And so returning to the question as to whether God is actually a villain or the bad guy in Oda's story and the devil is actually the good guy. Oda having turned the devil into a hero of sorts, even though we are regularly told Luffy does not want to be one. A lot of your comments told me to look into how the devil is not necessarily a historically agreed upon character. There are apparently different roles of Satan and Lucifer and the devil in various stories or interpretations. The devil is a complicated religious figure and to be fair, this might not even be turning the world upside down, but telling the story of the devil in a way that has not been mainstreamed for whatever reason, in a way that others have always known it to be but their voices have been drowned out. And I can understand why, because when making this video, I in no way wanted to allude to somehow God being corrupted. But I'm trying to be objective here. So I'll break it down as to exactly why the telling of the tale is maybe not as clear as I made it out to be in the other video. And as for whether Oda, or rather Goda, has some personal beef or issue with God himself, well, who can say? But in the story of One Piece, Monkey D. Luffy clearly does. And there are various examples of him defeating a so-called God in the story potentially explaining how Luffy's will of D might just be the will of the devil, maybe even the sea devil of the distant past, the first devil to oppose God, since we know that those that carry this will are God's natural enemy. And just as the devil was an enemy of God and man, so the devil Satan is more often seen as the chief evil spirit, the great adversary of humanity. On the other hand, Lucifer is more so seen as a proud rebellious archangel who fell from heaven Lucifer is an angel then created by God in heaven. On the other hand, Satan is the name given to a devil. Again, these are various interpretations. Lucifer has also been called the Shining One. Apparently the devil and Satan are two different biblical characters, but many people, even religious practitioners, have conflated the two over time. Maybe Blackbeard and Luffy each fulfill one version of the devil then, which we'll get to next. One Satan, the other Lucifer. Blackbeard the deceiver, liar and trickster Satan. Luffy the Archangel and Rebel aspect of Lucifer. But it's worth noting the following which might explain some of the confusion over the Devil's true identity. When Lucifer occupied the heavens as an angel, he remained Lucifer. But once he was cast from the heavens, he took the name of Satan. This is the important difference between the two names or titles. Hence, it is true that Satan is an alternate entity of Lucifer. Thus, they are both different too. They are different because they are two different existences of the same being at different points in time. As Lucifer, he was good, as in he was an angel. As Satan, he is very evil, as he is all evil combined. For Monkey D. Luffy and Marshall D. Teach, I can't help but think of their middle initial, the Will of D. Its inheritance is like reincarnation in a way, undying, and so reincarnating just like devil fruits. The Will in Dreams that devil fruits are born from undergo a seemingly endless cycle of rebirth, and so, an endless cycle of inheritance, just like the Will of D which like devil fruits just might be the endless inheritance of the devil's will. Given the numerous devil influences in Oda's story, as a counterpart or mirror to Luffy, Blackbeard might be the evil devil to Luffy's good devil or good aspects of the devil if you get what I mean. Not my personal opinion again. After all, the devil is not just known as the light bringer and morning star. The devil is also known as the prince of darkness. And after eating the Yami Yami Nomi, Blackbeard has become darkness itself, with powers that mirror those of the sea and sea stone, by nullifying devil food abilities, and so maybe the power of the sea devil. Which ties into what Shanks says in chapter 1, how devil fruits are the sea devil incarnate or were created by the sea devil, or the devil of the sea. 
How does this square with devil fruits being born from wishes? Maybe if devil fruits are born from dreams, then one is an answer to the devil's dream. Could that potentially be the yami yami no mi as I mentioned? The Prince of Darkness is a term used in John Milton's poem, Paradise Lost, referring to Satan as the embodiment of evil. And I've seen various sources for this but could never find a legitimate translation in the manga. But Blackbeard supposedly believes that the yami yami no mi is the most evil devil fruit power. Or at the very least from confirmable sources, the yami yami no mi is the most powerful or dangerous devil fruit out there. The greatest power of the sea devil, if devil fruits are still incarnations or creations of the devil somehow. The historical or real life pirate Blackbeard was also considered to be a sea devil but apparently his own history as a devil and villainous pirate is overblown. That the real life Blackbeard wasn't as bad as he is made out to be, at least when compared to other pirates certainly not a devil. But again that's up for debate. But the real life Blackbeard had a distinctive flag. It featured a white horned skeleton on a black background. The skeleton is holding a spear, pointing at a red heart. There are red blood drops near the heart. The skeleton is holding a glass, and scholars say it is making a toast to the devil. Now you've probably already heard about Blackbeard maybe stealing hearts and eating them to gain the devil fruit power of the user if the heart of the human body becomes a new devil fruit. The heart being the actual container of the devil fruit soul in your body and so the heart has become a fruit in its own way. Are you also aware of various folklore about selling your soul to the devil, and so the devil fruit curse, or the devil stealing or taking your soul generally? Well, let's look at something else about Blackbeard since he killed Thatch, one of his crewmates, as well as finished off his captain Whitebeard, or his former captain Whitebeard, and stole their powers. The possibility of Blackbeard stealing your actual soul, which would be different than Big Mom who steals life energy more than she does the actual soul of a person, it seems. There is another devil, or sea devil, Davy Jones, known for collecting souls in Davy Jones' locker. According to myth, Davy Jones' locker is a dimension where the souls of the dead pirates or sailors, where souls claimed by the sea, were sent. And Blackbeard, a man who killed Thatch and Whitebeard, and collected their devil fruits, and possibly their souls maybe, corrupting his own soul, like the story of Shakespeare's Macbeth, that we'll get to shortly. But why do I say this? Well, Blackbeard's power to use multiple fruits ties back into the concept of multiple souls, that he might just be able to trap or steal souls, or is already housing more than one within himself. This is relevant because if you recall, back in chapter 434, Whitebeard asked Shanks that if he were to spare Blackbeard's life and not pursue him, where would the soul of his murdered son go, is what Whitebeard asks. Then during chapter 552, a flashback is shown where an ace asks his crewmates what will happen to this same soul, the soul of Thatch, if Blackbeard doesn't pay for his crimes. Where will the soul of Thatch go? And so upon Marine Ford, after killing Whitebeard and covering his body in a cloak, Blackbeard emerges after this mysterious operation is complete. He then displays his new ability to now use two devil fruits, the power of darkness and the power of earthquakes. Of note, the power of the Gurgurinomi and proceeds to destroy Marine Ford. There is a scene in the anime during which the split image or memory of Whitebeard is shown, as if he was still alive, as if he had risen again within Blackbeard, as if his soul was present in that very moment, as Blackbeard uses Whitebeard's devil fruit ability for the first time. Blackbeard does not have a normal logia, maybe becoming darkness itself under certain conditions when light is not present, such as under the cloak or maybe by eating the hearts of his opponents just like Big Mom ate Mother Carmel, and it seems like her presence endures from within Big Mom. Maybe the same is true for Blackbeard. Maybe Blackbeard's darkness functions as a Davy Jones locker, trapping the souls of multiple devil fruits, preventing the souls of those he kills and steals devil fruits from, from escaping. And so this is Marco's former captain and crewmate, Whitebeard and Ace, pondered aloud where the soul of Thatch would go if Blackbeard didn't die. If Blackbeard had stolen the soul, consumed the soul, imprisoned the soul in Davy Jones' locker. Marco chased after Blackbeard for a similar reason. Where would the soul of Whitebeard go after Marine Ford if they did not avenge him? It would remain within the body of Blackbeard. And as Blackbeard told Ace, his Yami Yami no Mi is able to suck in the devil's power, maybe even the devil's soul. Perhaps Oda was alluding to a later revelation that nothing can escape Blackbeard's darkness, 
not even the souls of the deceased if the soul has merged with a Del Fruit power because Del Fruit users have sold their soul to the devil. Upon death, your soul belongs to the devil, and Blackbeard as the devil, or with the power of the devil maybe, can lay claim to your soul forever. The curse of the sea that causes Devil Fruit users to drown also makes them unable to resist Blackbeard, even in death, unable to return to the world of the living until Blackbeard is defeated. There is also the story from Shakespeare about Macbeth that I mentioned in the past, how Macbeth had trouble sleeping just like Blackbeard. The murderous crimes of Macbeth have cursed him such that he can never sleep again. Macbeth's original ability to sleep symbolizes his clear conscience. As the plot unfolds in the story, Macbeth's conscience becomes disturbed and he experiences the inability to sleep. He is unable to sleep. Macbeth's sleeplessness is a result of his anxiety and shame. This somewhat reminds me of Hakuba, doesn't it? The demon or curse we believe to be residing within Cavendish that is yet to be explained, and the associated sleep issues Cavendish had. We think for Cavendish it is a sword that is cursed. Obviously we know what curses really are now, but maybe for Blackbeard. The sleep issues are tied to a devil fruit or something else. Going back to what I said though about Macbeth, it is a story about a dark man a troubled man, Macbeth, who is a monster due to the murders he committed, wanting power and refusing to surrender for his crimes. Killing for power is what we have seen Blackbeard do throughout the story. In Macbeth, there are three witches that influence him and so the number three that has been associated with Blackbeard and three skulls. But the three witches that influence Macbeth, they tell him a prophecy that he will become a king and lead him down a path of destruction wherein the end or during the end, he becomes the ultimate evil. Macbeth is called the Evil Angel, which further emphasizes that Macbeth has replaced the devil in this story as the ultimate evil. Again, the real-life Blackbeard is complex, with some accounts saying his evil deeds are overblown, while others depict the historical pirate Blackbeard or Edward Teach via a legend that ties him to the devil, with a scholar quoted as saying the following, that seems to affirm Blackbeard as an evil pirate in the past. Some of Blackbeard's frolics of wickedness were so extravagant, as if he aimed at making his men believe he was a devil incarnate. There is not a pirate in history as infamous as Blackbeard. His reputation for wickedness permeates the centuries, and he appears even now as a force of evil in the popular imagination. It is because of this that Blackbeard or Edward Teach was deemed to have a blackened, or damaged soul, a corrupted soul that parallels Macbeth's own blackened soul after his acts of murder which led him to be unable to sleep. Moreover, a general history of piracy tells us that Blackbeard used to line his black beard with fiery matches during battle. Apparently accounts of people who saw him fighting say that they thought Blackbeard looked like the devil with his fearsome face and the smoke cloud around his head which might tie into Blackbeard's future awakening like Luffy, and the cloud of smoke that might surround Blackbeard, like the White Warrior Gear 5 Luffy or the Sun God Nika, making Blackbeard the Black Warrior, and the Morning Star Lucifer or Sun God Luffy versus Satan or the Devil Blackbeard. And I just want to throw it in there because it's an interesting question to ask. What would the angel Lucifer think of Satan? What would your younger self think of who you've become? In terms of Blackbeard not just being inspired by the character of the devil like Luffy potentially, there is something to say about him being possessed like Hakuba to become the Black Warrior. Possessed by the devil that is. For this hypothetical curse, I stumbled on a connection that blew my mind. It comes from the Holy Bible, the book of Genesis. It refers to the serpent in the Garden of Eden, and some interpretations distinguish between the serpent and the devil whereas others believe Satan entered the serpent to tempt Adam and Eve. And so what we have here is possession, the devil either manifesting and assuming the form of a snake or possessing a snake, depending on your interpretation. Which is interesting because one of my favorite Denzel Washington movies incorporates the Bible and this concept of possession. In the movie Fallen, there is a demon or evil spirit from Jewish legends named Azazel. Azazel, like the devil, was considered a fallen angel, and some believe Azazel to be approximate to or no different than the devil. Azazel or Azazel had an association as a fallen angel responsible for introducing humans to forbidden knowledge. And so consider Roxadizabek, 
The pirate famed for chasing the world's greatest taboos, the taboo pirate, chasing forbidden knowledge. Azazel was scapegoated for the evils of others, and his other titles refer to having the power of God. He is also regarded as a neutral evil, and so once again the ambivalence of the devil, his complicated nature. Now in the show Fallen, Azazel's signature, when you know he has appeared, he sings, Time is on my side, by the Rolling Stones. Time is on my side. Blackbeard, unable to sleep, who Shanks says has lived twice as long and had twice as much fun. Time is on Blackbeard's side. He's living twice as long as anybody else. This is often sung in the film, Fallen, when Azazel changes bodies because it is a demon that can possess human beings by touch. All Blackbeard has to do is touch you then to drain your devil fruit powers and like I said, maybe even steal souls or devil fruit souls and possess them like the devil. Azazel also had the power to transfer from host to another host if the current host is killed without needing to touch them. Although a host is needed for the demon Azazel to survive, without one it will die. This kind of reminds me of a ghost, haunting the living. Spirit position is a common phenomenon around the world in which a non-corporal agent is involved with a human host. Outside of Brook possessing his own body with a devil fruit, have we seen this ability before? Or Law's soul transferability from the Obi Obinomi? Have we seen a devil fruit that can take other bodies or take over the bodies of others? Do you think that Ichiro Oda would create something so broken if only under certain circumstances, certain conditions or restrictions? This notion of being possessed reminds me of the discussions of sleep paralysis and sleep paralysis demons. Why is there a demon in my bedroom? Those suffering from the condition ask. Sleep paralysis has been a staple of folklore, myth, and legend for centuries. Cultures across the globe commonly considered sleep paralysis to be the work of demons, or incubi, or incubi, who sat on the chests of unsuspecting sleepers, of unsuspecting people that were asleep. In 1798, an artist named Foizili painted the Nightmare in response to Tales of Night Terrors, a chilling image depicted in an incubus, or demon perched ominously on a woman's chest with a dark horse, the Nightmare, peering in from the shadows. And so maybe Blackbeard is haunted by a demon that is affecting his sleep, as I mentioned. Maybe it's a combination of so many different stories about the devil, whether it's the actual devil, Satan, or Lucifer, or Macbeth, or other devils that we'll mention. Or at the very least, haunted by his own villainous actions or some other past. But just as the real-life Blackbeard is complex, so is the devil as I mentioned. If you draw distinctions between Satan and Lucifer, and since it's far easier to discuss the devil as one person, let's dispense with the distinction, and so whenever I mention Satan or Lucifer now, we are talking about the devil generally. In the poem Paradise Lost, Satan, formerly called Lucifer, is the first major character introduced. He is a tragic figure who famously declares, Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, than to be a slave in heaven essentially. So the devil refused to serve. Luffy refuses to bow to anyone, including God. And I'm sure this will be the case when he finally meets Imu. An ultimate display of freedom then, is essentially what Oda is arguing. While some argue against reading Satan as a sympathetic or heroic figure, many scholars struggle with the depiction of the devil as the origin of all evil. Romanticist critics and so think Romance Dawn, but romanticist critics such as William Blake, Lord Byron, and Percy Shelley are known for reading Satan or the devil as the true hero, the real hero, of Paradise Lost. A conclusion that one reached is the character of Satan is too complicated to be placed in the box of good or evil though. That the devil in the story Paradise Lost, for one, is an ambivalent character, and any pro-Satan or anti-Satan argument is by its nature discarding half the evidence and turning a blind eye to what is true, what is really going on. And so in Oda's story, Luffy is neither really good or evil despite our subjective biases. He is neither a hero nor a villain. He's just living his life the way that he wants to, based on his beliefs. But in other stories about the devil that contradict the he's evil argument, he that shall not be named connotations, I've been informed by the comment section and did some of my own research to back it up, but I've been informed that Lucifer just wanted freedom from God and wanted to provide the fruit to mankind so that they were able to fill their desires and be free, which is the entire premise of One Piece, 
as a corollary, as a show for without devil fruits or hockey. If mankind did not have access to these things, devil fruits or hockey, how would mankind ever challenge the gods or Imu, who is God? In reference to my other video, the comment section informed me that true Satanism, those that are truly ardent followers and pay heed to the practice, that true Satanism sees Satan as a symbol of pride, liberty, and individualism. And Satan serves as an external, metaphorical projection of our highest personal potential. The potential of human beings as Vegapunk told us about consuming devil fruits, that the dreams that created devil fruits are a reflection of human potential in the future. And so again, true Satanism sees Satan as a symbol of pride, liberty, and individualism. And Satan serves as an external metaphorical projection of our highest personal potential, whereas God seeks only to control in their view. The rest of the world in Imu might see Luffy as a devil, but in many parts he is rightfully seen as the light bringer, the morning star, the dawn. As for whose answer to history is correct, as to whether the devil is evil or good in Oda's story or our real world depending, it would seem Oda is asking us to question what we are told regardless of who is telling it. And he has gone so far with the notion of freedom and speaking freely that he is even willing to question the authority of God. Yes, this is why this theory is so dark. And Oda is doing this without necessarily choosing sides since we don't know who is the devil of Oda's story just yet. But going back to the Gorosei, kneeling before the great Imu, or God, and asking which light should be snuffed out. This ties into Vivi seeing the light in this panel here. How she says in her personal darkness or darkness of a storm, she saw the Straw Hat ship, and they guided her to the light. And we see Imu holding the portrait of Vivi, whose Nefertari family can be considered traitors in the word of the Gorosei. Traitors of God, of Imu, for refusing to join with the others as celestial dragons. This same picture features the Going Mary sailing toward the light, and if you watched the most sinister One Piece theory video, you should know about the goat and its association with the devil Satan, who is often seen with devil horns. So this image has the goat, Luffy, the devil or morning star, the light bringer bringing the light to Vivi or bringing Vivi to the light. This also ties into Oda's god being corrupted, Imu presiding over a sacrifice of light, just as a woman was about to be sacrificed to the sun god in Shandora. Or perhaps Imu isn't corrupted and simply mistaken, and so those posters Imu is seen with. Each person in the poster in the image is tied to the light in some way, Vivi as I mentioned. But also Luffy and Blackbeard if they are devils, or if they are truly inspired by the devil. Ironic light bringers whose light must be snuffed out by God, by Imu. Now a subscriber named Sausage mentioned to me, why do you assume that Lucifer is evil? Is it just because the Bible says so? The Bible, that supposedly the word of Yahweh, or God, the God dictator that the devil Lucifer opposed. The first thing that an authoritarian regime does is proclaim that anyone that opposes them is evil. Think O'Hara and the scholars and the devil child Nico Robin. Just because the propaganda says you're evil doesn't mean you are. Now the craziest part of his comment comes now, and it is truly mind-blowing. In the Bible, Lucifer and Satan are two different characters. Lucifer is the fallen angel who rebelled against God, while Satan is seen at times as an agent of God. Speaking of the idea of rebelling against God, if he is all-knowing and all-powerful, God that is, then no being could possibly rebel against God, or even think they had a chance of doing so. It would be impossible. Which means that if Lucifer rebelled against God, it's because that's what God wanted him to do. God was pulling the strings. God tricked the devil into thinking that he had free will, or the freedom to oppose him. Lucifer was only obeying God's orders that had been programmed into him. Is that really a betrayal of God, then, if you're just following God's orders? Or did he turn Lucifer into a scapegoat that he could blame all of the bad things on? So again, that comment I just read comes from a subscriber, with a little bit of paraphrasing. But it's insane, it's a thought-provoking monologue, and it deserves a round of applause, I think, even though I don't know what to think about it. God did create the world, and Luchi tells us the gods, the celestial dragons, are the creators of this world. 
the world that Luffy opposes or wants to change. In one telling of the story, the first man and woman to be created, Adam and Eve, were tempted by the devil Satan with a morning star Lucifer to eat fruit from the forbidden tree in the Garden of Eden. Maybe if Joy Boy was the former sun god, and maybe if he was labeled a devil, maybe he was the original devil of the sea that contributed to the creation of devil fruits, or he became the new devil of the sea if the original devil became the god, the sun god. And so Joy Boy is a devil just as Robin and Ace were both considered devils or called the children of devils, and so all of Joy Boy's descendants would be the devil. And so, just as those that carry the will of D are viewed as descendants of something evil, and so maybe the descendants of the original devil, Joy Boy. Joy Boy as the original pirate king, and so a king that was the freest man on the seas. The king of the sea, if in the past there was once a kingdom of sea pirates, as hinted by Luffy, Kid, and Law, saying that on these seas you fight pirates, that pirates rule the water. Which is interesting because whether you come away from this video believing that the king of the world, Emu, is the devil still, or if you like this new idea that Luffy or maybe the supposed former pirate king, Joy Boy, is the devil, alongside counterpart Blackbeard, we are told that the devil Satan placed his throne over the water, just as the empty throne sits above the world in the four seas and so above the water, but also just as the pirate king is the ultimate ruler of the sea that on these seas the pirate king rules all. We are further told that the beast from the sea in the Bible has authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation, and all who dwell upon the earth will worship him, which sounds a lot like Imu ruling the world and being worshipped as a god as the great Imu as I mentioned, but also like the pirate king being the ultimate conqueror, a king on earth followed by the people there in opposition to God. And if Imu is really God in Oda's story, then Imu's name written as Umi, and so ocean or water, might have cast down Joy Boy or someone to the sea, where he became known as the Sea Devil. And just as those that ate from the forbidden tree were punished in the Bible by God, devil fruits come with a curse if you eat them. In one piece, Mother Nature or the sea will hate you as a devil fruit user. And again, Imu might be the god of the sea, the god of nature, and so the god and ultimate creator of the One Piece world, either past or current. Now I personally prefer the other theory that God and his followers were cast down and defeated, that the script has been reversed, and now the good guys are considered devils that aren't actually the evil ones. We all know that Oda likes to make social commentary on twisted narratives, whether it's Big News Morgans and the government controlling fact and fiction. After all, the victors decide what truth and justice, the nature of our reality is. They are the ones writing history, but it really could go either way. Is it your Oda saying the devil is right to challenge God? Or is Oda saying that in history, the devil won, but the descendants of God, who are now considered devils, God's descendants, those carrying the will of D, will have their revenge, with Monkey D. Luffy the principal inheritor of Joy Boy's will, the will of the devil, or the former God leading them to victory as an ironic morning star, the sun god and light bringer of the dawn, and Joy Boy as the original devil, who first dared to challenge and laugh at God. But as usual, we will have to wait and see. And don't forget to like the video, comment with your thoughts below, share this with your friends, and subscribe. Also click the notification bell. And if you have a Twitter, feel free to give me a follow in there as well. As always, there is more to come. Until next time.